Hey guys, my name is Octoman and today we are going to fix some of the problems we may or you may encounter when you were uh, following my Brick Breaker tutorial. And what we are basically going to do, we are changing all the 3D colliders into 2D colliders and rewriting or actually um, yeah, creating some other code um, or basically yeah, rewriting some code to make it fit um, for our um, yeah, game objects. Also, I want to notice that if you haven't already noticed, uh, you need to change your canvas scaler in the canvas from a constant pixel size to scale with screen size. Um, you will notice once you are going to do this, you have to rescale your game. So if you're going to play this game on maximize on play, it wouldn't fit the game scene. So make sure that you, um, yeah, set your canvas scaler to scale with screen size and then fit all game objects just by clicking them all and then just dragging them around until they match the canvas again. Okay. Um, okay, so let's start it. At first I want to get rid of all um, 3D box colliders um, and also the sphere collider on the ball. So let's get started. The same do with the brick. So I just select all of them go to that um, yeah, small gear here and then say remove component. What I want to do instead is I want another component in here and this is going to be a physics 2D component which is a box collider 2D. Um, this is going to fix later on some different problems you may encounter. Same go over to the dead zone we have created under the game and at Oh, I already deleted this one, so make sure that you get rid of the box collider in here too and set physics to D box collider 2D um, onto the dead zone. So let's figure or actually place um, or fit all the box colliders. The best thing, since it's not going to be the right size because of the canvas, we just or I just go over and um, resize the box collider to 100 by 100 so I can see the sparrow in the scene. Then I just can go over here and drag the corners or the sides or edges um, to fit my pedal like this. Also go over and do this for the walls. So you can do one wall and then just copy this one over or just um, yeah do it like, like I do, just follow up and uh, yeah, resize it to one about 100 and then go in here and then just fit it um, until it fits the wall. Okay, so let's get to uh, take that to the other side or just leave it, um, yeah, or make it like I have done before. Just go over, grab the corners in here or the edges and then just fit the size until you're fitting your colliders, um, your, your edges of your game objects or your wall images. Okay, so let's drag this one over a bit here. Again, 100 by 100. Then again, uh, activate that button, edit collider button. Again, drag those to the corners. And there we go. So now for the bricks, I already set the box collider for the bricks too. In this case, um, since it's going to be a prefab, I just need to take the first one in here, change the box collider to fit the brick. And then just press apply to make the changes to all other box colliders on the other bricks. Okay, so now for the ball, you can do, or you just go over and drag this one into the scene. Don't care, or sh you shouldn't care about the size and stuff, since we were just refitting the size into script anyways. Um, so get rid of the sphere collider, and also get rid of the rigid body component and add a new physics 2D rigid body 2D. Make sure that graphics, uh, gravity scale is set to zero. Um, and also add physics collider circle collider 2D. 
and make sure that we are setting as next the material for this. So I'll go to materials, right click, create new, and in this is going to be a physics 2D material instead of a just a physics to, um, to physics uh, material. And I rename this one to physics ball 2D, so I have a new, completely new material. And also you can see uh, there's only friction and bounciness inside that um, yeah, inside of that material. So we just drag this one into the sphere for, for now. Set the friction to zero and the bounciness to one, which is the maximum bounciness again, as we had in here. Um, and this is going to get rid of several problems we may or will encounter, I believe. Also, uh, some coding is needed. So if you are done with the balls, uh, just uh, click on apply. And then just get rid of the ball out of the scene, since we are going to instantiate this one anyways. Um, now we should have everything. We have the dead zone, we have the walls, and we have the bricks and the pedal. So let's go over to scripting. Um, what you want to do is at first open the pedal script, and in pedal script we need to do some um, for some different things. The first thing is, when we are in update, checking if there is a new ball and going for the rigid body component on the ball we now need to check if there is a rigid body 2d component instead of a rigid body same in here change rigid body well, which is the actual component and change this one to rigid body 2d um, now we need to set the force a bit different since um, the 3d and the 2d um, are going to react a bit different or uh, basically you, we need to call them a bit different. Um, at first let me type this one out, then we get rid of the upper line. So rigidbody.addForce is going to stay the same, but instead of um, um, taking in the three uh, vector 3 components directly inside, um, we can in here say uh, vector2 and then a force mode when Oh, let me, there we go, so we have a force mode 2D, I'm going to um, ignore that force mode right now, so we just uh, set a new vector 3, uh, vector 2 inside the force. Um, so we type in here, to uh, new vector 2, and then open brackets, and in here we have again the force, which is going to be 0 and on the x-axis, and y is going to be the ball force we just um, created before, and then we can just close this one. Um, I might have, we need another bracket in here. Okay, so I'm gonna save this already, and we can also get rid of that first line. You can also com command this one out if you want to keep it for later, I don't know, usage. Now to the on collision enter function, this is need needed to change on collision enter, whoops, to D. Uh, make sure that you use a capital D, and same for collision to D in here. So this is going to be a collision 2D part. And for the contact point, again, we have um, contact point 2D. But as you notice, contact point 2D does not support this collider. So we need to change some things in here and recalculate the stuff a bit. Um, so instead of checking if this collider is the pedal collider, we are checking for just a tag. So we say if um, call dot, whoops, if the collider we were hitting dot transform dot tag equals ball. So if we are hitting a ball or we we are hitting a game object which has a tag ball, we are going to do all the stuff in here. Um, at first we need to set a vector2 to store the contact point or the hit point. So vector2 hit point. And this is going to be... <coughs> contact dot point so we store the complete point in the x and the y x uh, yeah x and y axis um, into hit point so and instead the calculation contact point x we are going to say hit point dot x hit oops point dot x so we can instantly take the information out of the vector 2 we that we were just creating um, and that's it for that line and instead of saying contact.other.collider, um, 
uh, component is going to stay the same, but we say again here it is going to be a rigid body 2D component and we need to change the ball force as we have done in here in that upper line. So we just go over and copy this, uh, maybe the wall part, like so, and we just change it to that vector 2 um, ball force, but we need to make sure that the ball force is on the x axis and 0. Um, is on the y-axis since we're pushing the ball to the left or to the right. Don't forget to save when we are when we are uh, done with that. And now we are going to the brick script. In brick, we need to change the on collision enter to so on collision enter 2D and save this once again to the dead zone. The same we need to say on collision enter 2D and collider 2D. Like this, gonna save this also. Um, the game manager script does not any or d does not need anything else, and in the ball we don't need to change anything. So that should be it. Now so let's get uh, over to testing. It needs to compile all that stuff, so it might take a second. Okay, so now we have our pedal here. I added a. Uh, a particle system just for testing stuff around. However, the function is, as you can see, the same. The ball gets instantiated and also follows the pedal. And if I press space, then the ball is going to go up and down. And also, oh, I noticed this is not working completely. Um, since there is no rigid body 2D component on the pedal, that's wrong. Uh, basically, we don't need any rigid body on that, so we need to fix this by code. Um, I believe this is wrong. Yes, of course it's wrong, because we need to say ball force times the calculated value, which is the hit point value, as you can see in here. So, save this once again. Also, make sure that you're going to your uh, prefabs folder and select your ball. And um, I already have that ball tag in here. So go to add tag, select that small plus, and just write in ball. Make sure that you write it 100%. So that means um, all lowercase and uppercase needs to be set right. Okay, so let's test this out. I hopefully didn't forget... Oh, to save. Um, I did save, but something is wrong. Uh, let me check this one pretty quick. Oh, of course, um, instead of using other collider, we just say contact.collider. The co collider needs to be lowercase, and then we should be able to have everything back as we have done before, and it should work right now. So let's see, there we go. So the ball bounces way better right now and of course smoother as you have seen. Um, that lower angle impact on the wall is still there but can be fixed, um, I believe, pretty much quicker. Also you can see um, the ball, ball is going to speed up when it hits walls. So um, the, it's going to add over time so the game is automatically getting yeah, harder, I believe. Uh, we don't have any slowdowns anymore as we have had in the 3D Collider version. Um, also, as you have noticed, the game zone just didn't mention um, that the ball fold down or through it, so we need to make sure that we set this one to is trigger. Um, and then we can check this one once again. Let's see if we can respawn the ball. And there we go. So if the ball... Um, hits the trigger zone or the game zone, then it will be just, yeah, get rid of anything. Also, yeah, now you can see pretty nicely working. It may happen that you are going to hit the upper part um, with some weird ankle, so you might want to make sure that you have some little corner parts in here. I believe this won't happen anymore as it has done in the 3D version we have done before. But let's just for just to make sure. Um, this, uh, yeah, just go over and click or right click the canvas and create an empty game object. Just 
say create um, yeah create empty and we are going to add a physics 2d component which is going to be a box collider 2d also we set the size to 100 by 100 as you can see there it is included the oh yeah including the box collider so now i just go over and rotate this a bit maybe to 45 degrees in the z axis and then just drag this one over into the corner so if there is at any case um, the ball stuck between that two points we can just take it out of that if it is sliding the wall around again and then you could just save the ball or basically the ball um, would follow up that line and later on you can just catch this or the player can catch this with a paddle again so you may want to do that um, you can also leave this alone and hope for best um, but this needs of course a lot of testing so make sure that you do that in boss corners so if you're um, but don't do that ankle or, or the overlapping too high otherwise um, the, um, the player may notice there are something weird um, in the corners or you make some graphic changes in there so the user know that there is a corner type or an ankle of that so if you are playing your game again um, let me just lose that ball and we are doing some weird ankle maybe we can reproduce that problem again then we might be able to catch that ball from or inside of the ankle there in the corner of the of the play field however this is going to run way smoother as you may noticed there is again there are no slowdowns as in um, the 3d version or the 3d box collider version so yeah um, I hope this is going to fix some of your problems you may encounter well, now we have everything completely in 2d also the text system is quite fast maybe there was something weird with the coding I don't know really um, however, if you are using um, this for a 3D game or a 3D asset game, then yeah, this won't work, of course, because of the collision and stuff. Uh, however, then you have to fiddle around with yeah the really 3D colliders and the physics stuff in here. But for 2D, as you can see, it's going to be yeah or going to run pretty smoothly. Okay, that's what I want to just um, tell you um, how you can fix several things and how, how you use 2D colliders instead of 3D colliders um, to fix all the slowdowns and stuff we just had in the previous video. Okay, that's everything I wanted to cover. So uh, feel free to write me any comment, any questions, any other stuff you may encounter too. Um, until then, just um, yeah, don't forget to thumbs this video up if it was helpful in any way. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos in the future. Until then, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.